They were sheer in July, the male lambs were weaned and the old lambs that we would be selling would be weaned as well and they'd go to grass and they'd be sold in September. All the male lambs we finished here on the farm, they'd be sold on to Kildare Chillin through the Mayo producer groups. And we'd have a flock of breeding rams that we'd sell out in the back end of the year and a small herd of suckler cows breeding freaking okay with the weanlands, bringing a U grade type weanland. And we'd have a small flock of Connemara ponies which normally we sell out to England and France and places, but England would be our main market. And over the last couple of years we've found that to be very strong and growing. So there's a good mix of stuff going on in the farm. Good mix of stuff on the hill farm, as you can imagine, like we're from into holding as well, of course. Grass doesn't grow here nearly till the first of May, like so you have to have your hand in everything. Uh, breeding in the hill flock? Breeding hill flock would be 80% uh, Mayo Calamara to Mayo Calamara, and we'd have a small amount of Lennart in, in the last two years. Now, that mainly was in, we started to finish the lambs for killing. We found them to be quite good, the male carcasses, and killing in for the facts and stuff. Probably wouldn't be as good in the Black Hills out in Calamara here. You just beat that Mayo Calamario, just have the hardiness, you know, and they have that little edge over them. Yeah, because it is, it is, say, ha hard enough hills around here. That hard enough hills now. We, we lamb all our yos down in the gardens here in April, so we say, come the tin to me here, you know, they have to go to the hills, and if we Suffolk or Texas or whatever, you have to hold them down the lowland, and you have to supplement them with a lot of meal. And back to this part of the country, meal can be quite expensive. And look, come into M&A in June, you know, it's time for getting the cows AI'd and you're on the road getting the mares covered and whatnot. So, look, at the sheep will have their, their period back to the hills, move on to the next job and so on. And how do you find, say, the finishing system works, bringing everything through? You're trying to get, I suppose, as much value as you can out of the flock. Absolutely, yeah. Like, we have to get out. You know, we put a lot of money in. Like, we could spend two weeks in summertime between gathering and shearing. Like, you know, the hardly do in New Zealand. or my name's out here in Roundstone. But you know, it's, big, it's a big country where them sheep would be out in the mountains. You know, it's unfenced, so it's a big, big terrain. I suppose that's something that a lot of people haven't taken into account is the last few years, is the numbers of sheep maybe running on hills. Is there young people entering sheep farming around this area? Or? You know, they may be entering in a small way, but look, hill sheep farming is seriously intensive. workload, like, you know, you can spend a day out there and come home with two yos and even like, yeah, so you need everything that you're oh, getting, like, I suppose. I'm third generation hill sheep farmer here on this farm here. You know, and you said there well, you're the fourth generation there. Like, so, you know, you won't just get an idea in the head and head after night like, by under chores and fire them up at the hill and a couple of months time when they're there. Yeah, you know, it's a different story. You have to be bred into the hills. Uh, I suppose you have to be bred into the hills, but the yo has to be bred into oh, the hills. Very important, yeah. If you, you know, if your yo flock isn't coming on year to year, keeping your replacements. Wine in your lambs, we've done it several times there, building a flock or whatever, you know. And look, you could buy 50 in the following year, you might have to get rid of 30 from there, they just would not settle in the hill. You could get them 10 miles away, yeah. that wouldn't be uncommon. I suppose uh, a change you're, you're doing a bit of construction and you're building a new shed, uh, finish lambs, but also make things a bit easier for the suckler herd, is it? Yeah, suckler herd mainly is like I say, we're a fragmented holding, like so. If the cows, when they come close to calf in March, April, just bring them home, put them in the shed, calf them there with the moo on the camera, you know, be on top of the job. Is the problem there? It's to your hand. I was driving three miles at two o'clock in the morning. Is there a problem there? Bring in some lad, and he says, Yeah, no problem. Where is she? She's two miles in the road, and the, the nearest bush is a mile away. So, look, we've stepped up the mark there now. We're hoping that'll make a big difference to things. And lastly, it would be remiss for us not to give a plug to the Connemaras. Your name does come up in a lot of reports we see. Going well for you? Going very well. The last couple of years have been very, very good. And look at the Connemaras in August again in Clifton. We'll be showing our hand and fighting the good fight. Thanks very much, Callie.